The first half of the 80s had been one hell of a ride for Audi. The Sport Quattro Rally Car first won the World Rally Championship in 1982 and went on to win again in 1984, coming second in 83 and 85. But by 1986, it had become clear that the Sport Quattro, great as it was, just wasn't as competitive as it once had been, and even if it was, Group B was dead, so they sought new competition. This is the story of the Audi 90 Quattro IMSA GTO. After the dissolution of Group B, and Group S, for which Audi were in the midst of developing this thing, Audi still wanted to compete in rallying events. The FIA introduced revised regulations for the WRC in 1987, with the highest class now being Group A, a class in which all competing cars must be based on mass production vehicles, as opposed to the prototype-esque machines that had dominated the mid-80s. This resulted in Audi rallifying an unassuming 200 saloon and taking it racing in 1987. At around this time, however, Audi's management were looking for a way to reach an American audience, and Rally just wasn't doing the job. American audiences simply didn't care about Rally, and unsurprisingly, therefore, they didn't watch it either, so they hatched a plan. The Audi Quattro 200 Rally proved mediocre in the 1987 WRC, but the company already had its eyes set on a very different prize, and so for 1988, Audi took the plunge and reworked the 200 Quattro for the road. Created for the Trans Am Racing Series and representing the company's first earnest attempt at a road racing car since the 1930s, the 200 Quattro Trans Am was a monster. Powered by a 2.1-litre inline five-cylinder engine capable of producing around 500 horsepower, weighing only 1,100 kilograms, and fitted with Audi's famous Quattro all-wheel drive system, the 200 Trans Am was built to beat the Americans at their own game. The foreign car proved to be quick right from the start, and it scared the rest of the grid. Appeals were quickly made to do something about it, anything to level the playing field. And so, throughout the season, the regulations were tweaked and changed to hinder the Audi. Everything from forcing it to carry a 50kg ballast, later increased to 100kg, to narrowing its air restrictor, and even forcing it to use narrower tyres, all to no avail. Despite the Sports Car Club of America's best efforts, the 200 Quattro Trans Am beat everyone winning the Constructors' Championship for Audi and the Drivers' Championship for Audi driver Hurley Haywood. A German manufacturer seemed to have waltzed in and schooled the American teams in 1988, and so in 1989, the SCCA changed the rules to ban all-wheel drive systems and the use of any engine made outside of the United States. But this didn't bother Audi. They already had plans to contest a very different event in 1989. They wanted to take on IMSA. If you're enjoying the video so far, tap the like button and subscribe for more. It really helps the video out. Thanks. Like the 200 Quattro that preceded it, the Audi 90 Quattro GTO was based on a normal road-going saloon car. Or rather, supposedly based on a normal road-going saloon car. See, the IMSA regulations were a lot more relaxed than those used in Trans Am and so the only part shared between the Audi 90 and its racing namesake was the steel roof panel. Seriously, that's it. And it's no surprise, really. The Quattro 90 IMSA GTO was nothing short of insane. Weighing 1,200 kilograms and powered by a 2.2-litre inline 5, now capable of producing nearly 720 horsepower, and still using Audi's good old Quattro all-wheel drive system, the company hoped to achieve at IMSA what they had achieved in Trans Am the year before. Total domination. The 90 GTO wasn't like the 200 Trans Am at all. While the 200 had to be based on a high-volume road car, the 90 didn't. The car was built around a steel space frame chassis, and other than the steel roof, made use of lightweight composite materials for all of the bodywork. The wheelbase of the car had to match the production car, and spoilers had to be sold on 250 road-going units, but other than that, the regulations permitted almost everything else to be changed. Which, of course, it was. Audi sourced their engine from the Sport Quattro S1 rally car, with some modification, of course, and they were ready to go racing. 
The car initially weighed just 900 kilograms, but carried 300 kilograms of ballast weight, which the team placed carefully to balance the car as best they could. The season didn't start ideally for Audi. They missed the first two races of the season, the 24 hours of Daytona and the 12 hours of Sebring, due to overrunning engine development. The boss of Audi Sport at the time, Hervard Craner, was worried the engines wouldn't last the distance, and demanded they were worked to help reliability before the car was allowed to compete on track. Once on track, however, the team hoped the car would take the competition by storm. They had recruited the same driver lineup that had won Trans Am in the Audi 200 in 1988, and hopes were high for a repeat. The third race of the season took place in Miami, and this time, Audi did show up, though it wasn't one to remember. Hurley Hayward was forced to retire, and Hans Stuck went out with gearbox failure. After three races, the team had no points at all. It could only possibly get better from here. The team had eight weeks until the next race, and took the time to try and work out the kinks. The 90 GTO was the first car Audi had fitted with real-time telemetry, and they recorded speeds, pressures and temperatures from a van in the paddock. They used this data to refine the car leading up to the fourth race of the season at Summit Point, and it worked. Stuck and Haywood shocked everyone by scoring a 1-2 finish, not a bad way to end their points dry spell. Stuck went on to win the following race as well, however luck wasn't on Audi's side. Damage, accidents and other issues stopped the 90s ascent to the top for a few races, though the team did continue to hoover up points where it could. Towards the end of the season though, everything seemed to come together, with Stuck winning five of the last seven races of the season. It all came down to the final race. Audi had a real chance of victory. It would all be decided in California at Del Mar. The team boss chose to use untested engine components to try and secure an advantage, a move most of the team disagreed with, and one that would ultimately doom both cars to fail. They both retired. Stuck finished just two points behind championship winner Pete Harms in the driver's standings, and Audi claimed second place in the Constructors' Championship. Impressive? Yes, of course, but a bitter disappointment for the ever-ambitious Audi. Audi chose to leave IMSA after 1989, and all US-based competitions, to focus on the DTN Touring Car Series instead. YouTube thinks you'll love this video if you enjoyed today's story. Like the video if you haven't already, and until next time, goodbye.